Welcome everybody, I'm Corey Coleman. Yes, it is the middle of the day. You know what happens in the middle of the day. That means you have somebody who's more special than me. You get to meet somebody who's more talented than me. Somebody who's more pretty than me. Somebody who's just a better person than me. And I couldn't be happy about that. I was talking to this person before I even pressed the button. Which, by the way, she says a favorite part of anything. So it just might be downhill from here. I don't know. I hope not. But today, I am very happy to have another voice actress here from one of my favorite video games of the year, probably my favorite video game of the year. Please welcome everybody, Nicole Thompson. Nicole, how are you? Hey, Corey. All right, so we're going to have to roll that back because I'm going to need you to start with way more affirmations because you are way too cool to have other people be cooler than you. It's impossible. It's impossible, Corey. I don't know what you're talking about. That's why I say these things to have somebody who's more talented than me say nice things Affirm about you. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes me look cooler. Understood. Understood. And you know what? That's, what's up? that's smart. I think you got something going on here. I think you, I think you, I think you might know what you're doing. Just a little bit. It's called fishing. For those compliments right. but from people who are actually qualified to give them and make you look better as you do and hey I, what's up? I will toss them out any day i'm here <laughs> for a compliment war all right next half an hour we're just gonna compliment all we, need to anything. we get it i've done some things you've done some things you look great today <laughs> you look great you do not want to get into a compliment off with me you don't want to do that now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Mm, challenge potentially accepted. I feel pretty confident in my compliment abilities. I love what Nicole was saying before we even started. She complimented both of us. We are complimentary of each other in our style. I have the orange shirt. She's got the red hair. We're kind of we, – we're actually coordinated. I didn't have to call anything. We're basically we're basically twins. We we were so ready. We were ready for like the very the very aesthetic, you know, um, uh, <laughs> coordination here. I feel it. I can feel it. This is gonna be good, y'all. If you couldn't tell, we haven't even started asking questions yet. But <laughs> I'm gonna get, <laughs> and it's okay. I'm having I'm having so much fun with this right now. Uh, I have to ask though. I'm calling you from Austin, Texas. You are, I imagine. Oh, Texas. Are you, yeah, are you in LA? I'm in Los Angeles. Yep. But you were born in Texas, right? I was. I was born in the Dallas area, and I've been to Austin. Oh, you know, a handful of moments in my life. Just a few times. When's the last time you've been to Austin? I actually was in Austin before COVID. Uh, so what was that? 2019. Oh. Uh, visiting okay. some family friends um for i think thanksgiving there you go yep. oh, so 2019 thanksgiving i know exactly when wow proud of myself nice nice look at that so you still have some 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 roots here in in, in texas you still come oh, back every sure. now and then for sure for sure have not um, forgot where you came from lots of texas love i mean you can't <laughs> you can't you can't forget texas you just can't it's always it's there's always gonna be a little peace you know it's a big old state it's got a lot of pride I'm glad. A lot of people leave, and they don't. They don't give. They don't give uh, any respect to Texas. In fact, some of you people are still coming, moving from LA to Texas, which is something that you could easily probably do because I have noticed. Oh. I've noticed. I've noticed that everyone seems to be just flooding back <laughs> to Texas, which I get it. They got houses, yeah. guys, actual houses that have space in them, which is new. If you live in LA, it's kind of kind of rare. I don't know. Well, do you think that maybe you would do that someday? Because let me tell you who people – I love her energy, man. I love this. Because I, I haven't even been tell you who, who she is yet. Because some of y'all like – y'all saying – Oh, yeah. Who, Who's this person? Who Sorry. This I don't know why I should assume. Every, you know, everyone should know. No, people are stopping. They're like, no, this, this, this person's beautiful. I'm going to stop and listen to whatever she has to say. <laughs> but still, who is she? What is she doing here? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll stay. But I people, ask myself that question every day. No, people, you're going to want to know who this person is. And you already do, especially if you watch what we do. You know who this person is. I am fortunate enough to talk to, as I said, uh, I hear this person almost every day. And as I told somebody else who's in the same game, uh, this person is trying to kill me every time. I listen to them, so it's very weird to have somebody on here who wants to murder me almost every day for the last few, few few weeks here. But this is the voice, one of the voices, in the very popular Resident Evil Village game that just came out not too long ago. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try this again, Nicole. But I mess this up every time. You can you can straighten me out. You play Daniela Dimitrescu. 
I do play Daniela Demetrescu. Okay, I messed that last name up, though, right? That's... No, I feel like you actually did pretty well. I really liked it. You, you kind of went for the Duke's pronunciation uh, in the game. He goes, Demetrescu. Ah, uh, Demetrescu. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I feel, I, I feel like you're living, you're living in, in canon. You're in the world. <laughs> well, thank you, you thank you. You know what? Generally, there, there's a lot of like Dimitrescu, 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 Dimitrescu. I'm gonna go with that one right there. I like, it. I like you, it. You know what? Let's go. Let's let's just go. Damn, let's go with an easy name. Jill Valentine. Y'all so Jill Valentine. I can say that. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's <laughs> my girl. That's true. Jill That's Valentine awesome. from the Resident Evil 3 remake, which I've also played. Huge Resident Evil fan. So that's why I'm kind of geeking out to be talking to you right now, Nicole. This I, is crazy. I love it, Corey. <laughs> I mean, you're just walking me right into f- saying, so you finally came to see me. Everyone falls for me in time. I, I wasn't going to ask, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> you walked me right into it. I had to. I had to, Corey. No, thank you so much. I, I hate to be that guy, but I want to hear the voice while I have you here. I, I, how often am I, am I going to have this opportunity? You know. Uh, oh, and don't worry. I'll give you stars eventually. I mean, th- it, always, th- it always happens. Well, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to hold you to that. I know. Um, how did you become the voice of not one, but two iconic, now iconic Resident Evil voices? And I'm going to blow your mind, maybe not as iconic, but actually three, because I'm also Elena in Village, who... Bam! Who look at that. I had it ready. Three. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Nah. She's already ready. Yeah. Um, just throwing that in there for the, the, the three Elena fans out there that are like, well, what about Elena? Where's that girl? <laughs> um, she's here. We didn't. We didn't leave her out. She's here. Uh, how did I? How did I do that? Lord knows. Um, no. Uh, you know, very kind of uh, standard process from an acting perspective. Once you're already out here doing it, I auditioned for for Jill. Um, I got some character art with a blue tank top, and it was all code named. And I looked at that art, and I looked over to a friend of mine who knows games really well, and I was like, "That's that's Jill Valentine, right? That's that's Jill." That's, that's got to be Jill. That's Jill Valentine, right? We're, we're, we all agree that's okay, cool. Um, and so I walked in there with my best confident little Jill Valentine attitude and was like, I don't know, here's my version. Here's my version of what I think she could look like with the material that they'd written. And sure enough, you know, we, we hit it off. Callback process, met the director, Steve Knebley, who also is the cinematics director for Village, connection mm. there. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, we I think we just had a shared understanding of, of what she was going to look like and and the, the producers and we all kind of got along and here we are my goodness two games later uh and i i'm just absolutely grateful to have been able to work with so many talented and enjoyable people you know, you know what i enjoy i've enjoyed all your work i've enjoyed uh, listening to you play daniela and jill valentine but i gotta tell you that what what what's her name? Edna, Ella, what what Elena. Uh, Elena. Elena stupid as hell, yeah, man. You know, that, the that... most popular character in the game. <laughs> I mean, she carries the game. I know. I get it. It's fine, you know? <laughs> that that character it. is dumb as hell. I hate that character. <laughs> I, can't, I don't like to see people die, especially burned alive, but I was so happy to see that character go, man. Believe me, when I got the script, and they changed a few times what Elena was going to like do and be, um, it changed. And so when I got the final version of what was going to happen, I looked down at the page and I was like, excuse me, what? <laughs> she's, she's doing what? You mean you want me to convincingly sell that she shoots her dad and then five seconds later is like, dad, okay, I got this, guys. No worries. Don't worry. I'll handle it. I got it. I'll handle it. Okay, I'm on it. Uh, and you know what I did? I, I you know, I, I stand by that. My goodness, her story is quick, but mighty. And uh, we had to quickly make you kind of like her. So you felt a little bit of something when you lost her. And thankfully, Todd Soli came in there, who plays Ethan, and definitely made it hit hard because his, his devastation over her demise is, I, uh, I think, probably heightens it a little. <laughs> oh, it was. I, it almost brought a tear to my eye when he said, God damn. <laughs> that one Everybody word got me. me. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, you know what did they say when they gave you this character? Because you already there. Did they just say that? You know what? You sound like you could read this character right here. It's a side character. You know, you want to you want to take this too. 
So actually, it was the other way around. You want to hear something super funny? Um, I got the call and they were like, hey, small character, her name's Elena. Do you want to come do it? And I was like, oh, my God, of course I want to come do it. If Jill's not in Village, like, please let me come play. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do Elena. Sounds great. Sounds good. And then I, f I don't even know exactly when it was, but it felt like a day later or a couple days before they're like, oh, also, there's this other small character. She's like a witch sister. Don't worry about it. And I was like, great. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so I think it was actually sold to me a little bit in reverse uh, because once we got going, I was like, wait a second. I'm pretty sure these these uh, amazing vampire ladies and my very tall mom are, are going to be like <laughs> at least memorable. Just a, uh, just a tad. They were, in fact, <clears throat> memorable. Yeah, just a tad. Just a little yeah. bit. You know, the, uh, for those who don't know Resident Evil Village, even Resident Evil, it's pretty much a, a horror series. You know, it's kind of coined the term survival horror. It's steered off into action. It's also steered into a hybrid of action and horror, but mm -hmm. definitely known for being a horror video game. And, and there you are with mom right there. And, oh, mom, my fam. Yeah, yeah, man. Big ass, fine ass mom right there. And you've been in, in addition to being in horror video games, You've also been in a lot of horror movies, several horror movies. Yeah. You were I don't in, know. This genre just keeps chasing me. I know. You were in the deadliest movie ever made, Nicole. Andrew. I sure Andrew. was. Uh, you were also in, here's something that's going to take you back. You were also in, you had the Amityville horror, but oh, you don't know anything until you had the Amityville terror. Terror. Oh, I know. It's <laughs> 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 so that's I'll, it yeah Look, the highlight of my b-horror movie career right there <laughs> i met so many good friends in that film though and there are some really good actors it's so funny in that film that to this day are like have gone on to do some really cool things so i still i still hold proud uh of the people that i met getting to do that movie i met some really really cool people and i mean that's half the fun of what we do in this industry is just like meet cool people and work with badass yeah. talent yeah when did you when when did you make that and let me and listen uh i'm gonna it's gonna be bad it's gonna make might seem might seem ra racist in a little bit might seem like one of those all white people look alike things to me but i'm not saying that i'm just picking gonna pick somebody out here is that you right there that that is yes that's me Okay, Whew. all right, because I couldn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I didn't you know couldn't you. tell. Oh, I get it. No, you're totally fine. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that little blonde Nikki, that is 17-year-old uh, blonde Nicole Tompkins right there. Hello. 17? Oh, yeah. How long ago was this? Uh, a little while ago. Well, the reason why I'm asking is, asking is because I'm giving you a compliment. I really, that, it doesn't seem like it's that long ago. You don't, you, you still look you, you look great. You look very Thank young. Thank you. Know. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, not forever ago, but it was a while ago. Okay. All right. Well, I, I would not know from looking at it, just to tell you. <laughs> my, from my you know what's really view. funny? I actually thought this was really funny because, I mean, obviously, like, it's it's one of those, <laughs> like, tying into Amityville, like, B-horror world, mm -hmm. like, people that just really want to watch, like, an okay, funny kind of horror, horror -y thing. Um, one of my favorite comments was there was like this whole little war that started in the in the comment section at on some video of some promotion, which I mean like it's a target for bad comments. Yeah. But they decided that I looked thirty five and that I had no right playing <laughs> a seventeen year old, and they were like, "She looks older than her mom. She has absolutely no right playing seventeen. Why does Hollywood keep hiring these old actors?" And I'm sitting there seventeen and a half, like. But I am 17. This is what 17 looks like for me. Okay. Um, I don't know. That was a side note. That was the exact voice that I did as well as I read those comments. And I continued to read their comments in that voice, which is usually what I do when there's trolley comments. Well, that must prepare you for comments that you get now when you become such a huge name, in, 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 especially in voice acting, and especially in an area where, you know, again, let's admit it, there's a, 
there's a lot of horny dudes out there because <laughs> now you know you're playing this character who's associated with this you know this this hypersexualized uh you know vampire woman uh, and i also have some of the flirtiest lines in the game i'm realizing as i'm doing these live signings just like every individual it's like hey ryan kiss me like that's just my world right now i'm just signing that over and over and i have to keep putting a disclaimer hi if you meet me in person please do not actually do so um I, it, it won't be good and i did not consent okay just clarifying uh but yeah no my character is incredibly flirty uh, as they all as they all are but but capcom knew what they were doing we knew oh, we yeah. knew going in like we're you know we're, we're we're playing with some some powerful playful you know clearly sexually confident vampire ladies um and i mean we had a blast there's nothing like wearing motion capture heels it's really the sexiest you wow. can get motion you capture heels if you see us do the work, like, ooh, heels with little balls all over them? Dang, girl, ready for a night out. <laughs> That's it. That's us. Jeanette Moss right there, everybody. Cassandra. Yeah. Uh, well, I, well, with the comments that you're talking about, I mean, how has that been, you know, been where you are now? Because, I mean, look, 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 you've blown up with this game. You know, you're becoming a name now. So how has the online experience been with strangers? I've honestly had such a positive community come in and support me. I've had honestly some of the best of the internet come and join me on streams and watch mm -hmm. interviews and watch live signings. Like I really pride myself in, not really myself, just like I pride myself in this whole like community that's just so, been honestly so wholesome and so lovely. So I've, I've really had mostly positive experiences, which I think is just a, a, a true blessing and really is, um, I don't know. It just shows people showing up and being really cool and like wanting to connect. Because if you want to connect with us, like you got to connect with us as people. Um, and they're they're doing that. And that's such a that's such a that's one of my favorite parts about doing this. You know, we want to tell stories. We want to connect with humans. We want to make a difference in people's lives if we can, even if that's just bringing a smile to their face or mm -hmm. distracting them for a couple hours in a game. Like, I mean, that's you know, that's the dream. And so I, I've really just been overwhelmed by by the support and the love and and how much it means to so many people. I had gotten that with Jill, especially like she means so much to so many people in so many different ways. And I think how people react to video games, stories, characters is so unique and individual to them. So there's such a broad spectrum of how people relate to these characters. And I think that's that's amazing. Like it just lets the diversity of people show up because um, you spoke to uh, Maggie Robertson and she always says this so I just copy it because she's smart uh, <laughs> she's like once this character is out like it's not it's not really yours anymore it's it's it belongs to the people around you and how yeah. they interpret or make fan art or mod or you know modify for the game or whatever with these characters like it's up to them and the amount of creativity that I've seen has honestly been inspiring and so so fun Nice. I say that's a very endearing answer right there too. That's a very you know, it's great. It sounds like you're very grateful and very humble about it. That's cool. Oh, 100%. No, I mean you have to be. We're we're just as as grateful to be part of this and I always tell the fans this like we're just as excited. Like when the trailers drop, I'm like, "Oh my god, it's here." <laughs> you know, you're like texting your castmates cuz you can't say anything and you're like, G -g -g -g, "Look at this moment." And you're like screenshotting things just like all the fans that are like screenshotting things and being nice. like, "Look at this person." We're like, "I know." <laughs> that's us we're 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 nerds and silly actors too well i want to bring this back to a horror theme right here because in addition okay, to okay. the things that i talked about let's get spooky uh, yeah let's get a little, let's go a little kooky and spooky right here in addition to the thing i'm talking about you've also been in some very high profile horror properties such as american horror story i believe this is hotel you play that happens play yeah look at my fam i'm so blonde yeah. Chloe Sevigny, Wes Bentley. Wow. I yeah. I call them mom and dad for a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You play a character called, uh, named Scarlett Lowe. You know what I mean? With all this, you know, all this horror stuff, is this all a coincidence and do you gravitate towards horror properties? No, I think it just finds me. I'm going to be honest. Because f funny enough, I've never been like a huge like horror movie. I want to watch a lot of horror. I love the fantasy genre. I love psycho thriller. I love things that make you think. And I think it's just, you know, it's just kind of where, where the chips fall, but I've been very lucky for like the horror stuff that I have done. I, I feel like I've just gotten to do some very cool characters, which is honestly what you really get attracted to is like 
characters that are unique and interesting and and speak to you in some way. Um, and I think you always end up as what you're supposed to be doing. I really believe, you know, I'm always exactly where I'm supposed to be. So if I end up getting to do a role, like there's a reason. And usually it's it's so true. I can look back at every single project and be like, wow, like I'm so glad I got to do that or I met this person or I really learned something about myself getting to bring that person to life. Um, so yeah, I haven't really sought out horror. It's just found me. And it, obviously it's also a super popular genre and it sells very well internationally. As you're seeing, uh, Village is massive success in so many markets. Like it's just, it's a really, really popular genre. So there's also just a lot of horror content. So I think that's probably more it than me intentionally seeking it out, but sure has, seems to be a theme so far. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be in anything these days, being one of the most popular things out there, one of the most popular genres, which is hard, right? You know, now. I mean, whatever, like, that's what I suggest. Like, if you can, you might as well. Eh. <laughs> uh, now, in addition to the Resident Evil games, you know, you've been around, you've done some things, you've done, uh, you did, here I have Middle Earth, Shadow of Look War. That. I showed up in some fantasy, freaking Lord yeah. of the Rings, can't beat that. That was actually one of my first games um, not one of my, was my first game, my first motion oh. capture experience ever. And, um, I was bright eyed and bushy tailed and I walked onto the Warner brothers lot. Like this is awesome. And I walked <laughs> right in to some of the, like the biggest names in the mocap world, Troy Baker and Laura Bailey and Travis Willingham and E.K. Amati and all of these people. And I was like, you guys are cool. Like, wow, this is amazing. And they just took me under their wing with such professionalism and showed me how committed as artists you could be and what you could do from the narrative perspective in games that I, 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 I attribute, Troy was also our director. Like I, I attribute so much of, kind of just my initial inspiration of how cool it is to like get to work in video games um, to those people. Cause they just, they just really kind of opened my eyes and it was definitely a very cool first experience. Yeah, well, That's great to hear. Cause I was going to ask you what it's, what it's like working with Troy Baker and, you know, and other people like that here. I have a clip of you right here in uh, middle earth uh, shadow Shadow of War, and uh, this is you with Troy. This is you actually in action with Troy Baker right here? My raiding party was trapped in the lower city overnight. How many of you were there? Not enough. We need to get up there as fast as we can. I was showing Nicole because she's looking at herself and she's like, "Damn, I'm good. I'm about to." Cry. No, you know, I, 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 I was like, well, I could have done this better. Well, you know, and this, I'm much more. I'm much more that. But yeah, dang. Dang, dang, she's good. Yeah. I also, I'm just, um, it's really fun to look at that because I also was very young when I did this as well. And so it's really fun to just be like, oh, they, they scanned my face too. So it's actually my face that they then like, you know, edit and, and make however they want to actually make it look, but it's me. And so it's really funny to like, look at that. Cause I know when I first showed my family, they were like, you're in a video game. <laughs> I, like, I know, I know. Look at that. Uh, I got to ask you, because Americans are always being criticized for not being able to do a British accent, while the Brits are able to come over here and just nail us with our country asses. Now, you know, you do a very good British accent. What do you do to, to, to get that? Um... Are you just that talented? You just have an ear for I accents. Know. It just takes time. And I'm not always that good. Like, sometimes I really have to work on it. Um, and like switching back and forth. So, I don't know. It, it, it really, some people are way better than I am. And I have to, I have to work on it if I really want to like be good. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It takes me, it takes me a little more work. I, I learned by, I learned by ear and you know, I, I work with the, uh, a coach when I can. And even in this game, like even now when I listen back, I'm like, Oh, I could have done that better. Or, you know, like I'm, I'm so, I'm so picky about it, but I also just, I don't know. It's so fun. And we love the Brits and you know, if you're going to be in Lord of the Rings, you got to make it happen. So sure enough, wasn't born, you know, to be in Lord of the Rings as far as like what country I was born in, but <laughs> sure did get to pull it off in a video game, which is something I'm proud to say. I made it somewhere in the Lord of the Rings Tolkien world, <laughs> kind of, and I'm I'm more than proud. 
I like the way she says, I have to work on it as she effortlessly, effortlessly does it right in front of me right here. So, <laughs> <laughs> with no, no difficulty I mean, at all. Here's the thing. I have, a lot of, I have a lot of British friends, and I also work with Neil Newbon a lot, who uh, is in Village and RE3, and he's Heisenberg in Village. I'll just shout his name to the roof. And he plays Nikolai and Nemesis in RE3. And, uh, and, and he's, he's British, and we, we are hard on each other when it comes to our accents. So I just know, like, sometimes when I flip into it, Neil's just cringing, because if you ask an actual Brit, they're like, mm, that was wrong. Mm, no, <laughs> sorry. What part of London do you think that you're from? You know, like, they're so specific, and I've worked with a lot of very <laughs> picky British people. So I just know, like, I keep my ego way in check <laughs> when it comes to the accents. Um, um, and I rely on them so heavily. But the good news is I get to dish it right back to Neil in his American accent. And I get to be like, mm, I don't know. What was that supposed to be? Um, and, and we sort of live on that. <laughs> what, now, who does Heisenberg? Neil Newbon. Neil New he has one of my favorite lines in the game. And I don't know what I, you know, it's funny because whatever accent he's doing, it's hilarious. It is a, there's a line there where he says, I don't know how well, how well you know the game as far as his lines go. But there's a line where he says, uh, uh. Mother Miranda doesn't care about us. No. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I yes. love that lo I love that line and I love no. I can't really nail what 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 accent he's doing, but he has one he is one of my favorite characters in the game. I just love that and and I haven't got so I'm I'm doing my own playthrough of the game and I've been bringing all of the actors on as I get to their parts, which is really fun and actually next couple of weeks I'm going to start the Heisenberg stuff and Neil's going to come on and and play and hang with me. Um but I also from what I've heard of Heisenberg and what I heard of him doing it like I love that his accent is so like is it no? Is it, well how about <laughs> no? It's just like this really fun in between thing. You know what just, it is? All right. It's it's very groovy. You know? It's very groovy. <laughs> Guy's got a swing in his hips, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, you now you are at this point. I mean, you've 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 acted with the greats, you've voice acted with the greats out there. You know, now you're you're you you are a bona fide voice actress. People know you. You're a fan favorite. Uh you are a, a, an icon now, uh, and, and like uh, we just showed you, you acted with Troy Baker. And how do you feel about this whole thing with uh, you know about voice actors and video games becoming as well known as they are in re recent years? You know, Troy Troy Baker we just showed he did a. For those who don't know, he was uh, he was uh, what's his name in uh, The Last of Us. You're nailing this, Joel in The jo Last of Us. Joel, yes, yes, Joel in The Last of Us right here. Uh, yeah, you know he's a uh, 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 Nolan North. You know him uh, from. Yep. What are you, no, go ahead, tell me who it is. Oh, uh, I mean uh, Nathan Drake and Uncharted and seventy-five other video games that you've played, yes. but that's probably one of his big ones. Yeah, so she's been with the greats out there, uh, and now you are. How do you feel about how voice actors have become so popular these these past few years, and how do you feel about being put into that group now? I mean, I I think it's great. So, I mean, three things that come to mind. <clears throat> We're going to start a list. One, um, I think voice acting and just narrative in video games has evolved and changed with the technology so much in the past few years that there's just greater like importance and attention, I think, placed on a lot of the performance, which is really, really cool because it also means we get to go in there and really put our hearts and souls into something and, and kind of open up and, and create something really cool. Um, and then on top of that, like, voice acting is acting. It's just, like, I do film and TV. Like, I came out here, you know, having been a musical theater nerd and dropping into film and TV and then really discovered video games and, and voiceover more because I had someone be like, hey, kid, you're good at this. And I was like, oh, really cool. Like, I'll work on it then. <laughs> um, and here I am. So I, I think the fact that they're getting some attention for their work is really cool and it's really special because if you see the behind the scenes stuff like the the work that they're doing is just as valid just as interesting just as heartfelt just as deep um and just as compelling as stuff that you would see on camera as well i know i've been i've been on both and a lot of voice actors have um because voice actors are just actors and people when people ask me like how do you get into voice acting i'm like go to acting classes like be be a good <laughs> actor you know like like work on work on storytelling because adapting that to voiceover is is really just technique you know you can learn some more stuff about 
you know, vocal resonance and you can learn some stuff about vocal variety and all of the technical aspects of motion capture. But the, I mean, motion capture is happening, happening in movies just as often these days, you know, and the green screen work, like it's very similar work. Um, so I, I love people being able to kind of see the, the work that goes into it. And of course, like one of my personal missions with some of the playing through the games that I'm in and even other games is I love bringing on the talent and having them talk about their work because it's interesting and people don't know because it has this digital face in front of it. Um, and also video games in general, like it's there's so many people involved. There's animators and game developers and all these people that come together to make it work. It really does take a village. <laughs> Amazing. Boom. Had to do it. Um, and I just, I, it's, it's inspiring, truly. It's amazing to see how these projects come together. Um, so I, I love it. I think it's great that um, people are getting recognized for their work and, and appreciated for it. I mean, we like that in general. Who doesn't want to be able to be like, oh, this thing that I love that inspired me, there's a real person behind it, and that person is proud of what they did. Like, so cool. You know, normally I wouldn't ask this question, but, this question, but I've heard people give different answers for this. Uh, yeah. Because I would, you know, I would assume that, and this is probably the case for you, somebody who's been in front of the camera and behind the camera and done all kind of work. You know, I, I would assume that they both have their pros and cons and they just balance each other out. But I have talked to some people, I've talked to a lot of voice actors and actresses who have said, you know what, I, I do like acting, but man, this voice acting thing, I really enjoy. I just feel like I found something that really is me. And then some people say, hey, look, I like both. So, you know, I, do you have a preference or do you just find both of them equally as satisfying? I tend to be a both person for sure because I'm I'm just such a performer and I still have I have so many goals of like film and TV stuff that I want to do. I'd love to do some more theater. Like I have a feeling I'm going to do a lot of uh, mediums in my career, and I I think that's really special. Like I like the variety. It's exciting to me. Um, voiceover definitely has a super special place in my heart. There's something super unique and super fun about the experience, and especially when you get to tap into motion capture, which just is its own level of just cool. Like you just can't deny that there's something cool about being like I'm in a like I'm a look at that. It's a digital me. That's so weird. <laughs> like look at my face. Like my face. That's my face quirk, but it looks different. You know what I mean? And um, and I, I I mean there's just something so cool about that from like a kid standpoint. You're just like ah, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah. It, Basically, all of it, and exactly, they all have pros and cons. They all have things that make them unique and special. Um, and I love, I, I really, I just like storytelling in so many different capacities. And I think that there's such a variety of mediums that are being accepted and, like, looked at and appreciated is just so cool. It's just diversity of humanity, again, you know, diversity of what we like and, and what we look at and what we make. Like, how cool. People are crazy. They inspire me. <laughs> how heavy are those rigs, man, th that you have to put on? Yeah, um, so they're definitely weighted. Um, there's a full, there's two cameras on that front helmet. I don't know if you can see it, and it's like a foot from your face. Um, sometimes they're like GoPro-ish or like similar. And it's really the most flattering wide-angle shot of your face. I wish I could show you <laughs> what a mocap angle looks like. It is hot. Ugh, should be my headshot. It's like the most like nose forward angle you've ever seen <laughs> of a face. Truly, truly. Um, and yeah, it, they are heavy. They're not unmanageable at all. I definitely, after doing mocap work, always have this one spot in my shoulder that I'm like, all right, someone's got to work that out. Where's the massage gun? <laughs> Because um, there's a lot of weight just on your neck, but you don't really notice it when you're doing it because you're too busy being like, oh, this is so fun. Um, and then later you're like, oh, I could, yeah, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> you know, I was also asking you this because, again, very talented. When I, you know, when I say multi talented, we haven't even like had kind of scratched the surface yet. You know, we've, <laughs> we've seen, yeah, I mean, I look, I, I, I do research. I got people look up things about you. Corey's been around. Corey knows things. So I you know. know some things. <laughs> About you, and one of the things that I found out that I did not know, but was pleasantly surprised to find out, is that uh, I was asking you about what you like to do, you know, in front of the camera, behind the camera, but now I see that you also do photography, if I'm correct. 
I do do some photography. Hey. Yeah, that's Jonathan McClendon right there. There's Maggie Robertson as Lady D. Yeah. Yep. I've always been a, a shutter bug. Um, started as a hobby, and then for a while there, I was I was doing a lot of headshots for actors and friends because I was like, I can offer headshots that look just as good as these professional headshot photographers for half the price because you're my friend and I know how to do it, you know? <laughs> um, just like being a scrappy actor. And then um, I just continue, you know, I just love light. I love how it bounces off of people. And um, so I really enjoy doing photo stuff. You'll see me all the time. Uh, with a camera, especially if I'm traveling, I'm never, I'm never without. Well, being that you like to do photography, does that mean maybe one day being behind the camera, having an eye for the lens, directing? I think 100%. That's definitely in my future. I think I would really, I'd really enjoy that um, at some point. Um, I, I have a, I have a mind. I just, we, I like making stuff, so it'll happen. Yeah, I, I've always said that I think that. You know, Hollywood being what it is and, and the entertainment business being what it is, I've always thought of it was if there was a lot more power sometimes behind the camera. And I've always liked to see people, especially people who don't have as much of a voice as others in, in you know, in the right. business. Uh, I think it's a good thing for them to transition behind the camera. So that's why I was thinking for you, maybe. I mean, there is a lot of there's a there's a lot of. There's a lot of power in a lot of positions if, if you're looking at like Hollywood from a power dynamic, because really, if you want to talk about power, that would be producers, you know, yeah. like producing things, um, executive producing. Really, it's about just follow the money. You'll find the power. Um, but I think more than that, it's really just a different kind of creative outlet. You know, if I if I want to direct, that's my desire to take on like a, a whole project or a whole vision. Like I want to mm. be responsible or for telling this entire story from my kind of point of view with these other talented people. And then you're selecting really who you get to work with. You know, it's like, it's a different kind of creativity because in front of the camera, you're most responsible for your version of telling someone else's story, which is something I really love and I value a lot. Um, and if you wrote it, your own story, but, um, it's, a, it's just a different kind of art form, really. Uh, and I think it's really important for people in all positions to have had some experience or at least an understanding and an empathy for all the other roles on a set. Because I also, like, just knowing what the crew does and knowing the crew positions and what they bring to a set is so incredibly important and powerful because you know, like, how vitally important the first AC is and that if that first AC isn't there, you wouldn't have a movie. And the fact that their skill is really difficult. They're doing incredible focus pulls. Like that's a skill. That's a talent. It goes completely underappreciated. There's no statues or awards, mm -hmm. but like that person has an art form and a skill and a, and a technique. Um, and there's good ones and there's not good ones. And people love to choose who they work with and the energy that they bring. So just recognizing that there's so many different ways to kind of make it all happen. As I always said, there's so many people involved in bringing any medium to life. And so that's really what it's about is community connection and and getting good at working with people and working together to make something that you're all excited about oh yeah i wasn't trying to insinuate that anybody was more important than anybody else either you know I've, I, oh, no, i know you weren't i just wanted to get on my soapbox and rant for a minute <laughs> you know i just thought that behind you know when you're in front of the camera you know, everybody makes the decision for you and says, all right, I think that you'll be better for this role. You're this age now. You can only do this thing right here because this is what people want to see, this demographic. You know, and behind the camera, it just seems like you just can diversify more. You know, you to take Then again, take on Corey, here oh. I am in front of the camera with a mic. And let's be honest, this is my show. So I just make you think. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, she's not, people. Uh, no, this is the, she's not kidding. This is your this is your show because this is all about you. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm aware. So really, my power is to make other people think that they had a good idea that I helped them bring to life. <laughs> and really, it's just me going in there being like, well, this is what we should do. And then being like, oh, my God, I'm brilliant. I'm like, you are. I'm so proud of you. So so far, she's been she has, she has been in control before. You know, the moment I said this is going to be a great interview because all I all I got to do is just ask a question or two, and she's just going to run with it. And so this, the, you are damn right. This is your show right now, and I love well, it. I'm very happy about that. 
You but was, no, you in, in all serious, to answer your question, yeah, I think there's a lot of fun about being behind the camera. There are definitely some limiting factors when you're in the acting position, but you sort of, I wouldn't even say sacrifice those, that, that power or that decision making mm-hmm. or like letting other people decide what you're doing or where you are. You're maybe sacrificing that more in the name of collaboration mm-hmm. than I think, uh, being a victim to someone else's opinions because really I, I I truly believe you decide if you want to show up feeling like a like a victim and I I, I wouldn't say most actors feel that way I think yeah. most actors are like I'm I'm choosing to be here and especially if we want to talk about voice acting like freaking you can you can play characters that you look nothing like Maggie Robertson is an amazing example she is however very tall and very beautiful but she you know she has an incredibly mature voice you know she's waiting for theatrical you know like on camera stuff she's got to age into like the kind of characters that she's going to play and she's going to be fantastic at but she now in this time in her life with her youth gets to still play like amazing, powerful, you know, older uh, nine foot tall vampire women. Um, <laughs> and, and that's just one of the cool parts of voiceover. So there's, there's so many mediums and opportunities. I really believe that. And, and living in that kind of world of abundance is so much healthier for the creative spirit. And so that's something I always encourage artists is I'm like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta let go of this belief that there's only a certain amount of something because whether or not that's even true and it's true scarcity and all of that whether or not that's true that belief doesn't serve you in your creative process i want you to go out there and believe that hey like there's there's something for me there's something that i'm supposed to tell there's a story that i'm supposed to be a part of um because if you walk out with that belief you'll find it it'll find you for sure and i think you have to believe that it's there uh so that you have the space to let it find you that's great you know and it's great it's really great to hear you talk about your your co-workers, co-stars, your fellow actors and actresses out there with such funness. Uh, you know, it's sad because, uh, and I didn't know this, and again, correct me if I've got something wrong here, but Jeanette Mouse uh, passed yes. away uh, not too long ago from a battle with cancer, I believe. She did. She did. She uh, passed away a few months before Village uh, released. Um devastating total total tragedy very very amazing woman credible fighter and we all just sort of feel super grateful that one we got to know her meet her be with her work with her and two that she is getting appreciated so greatly for getting to be in this game and that's another you know really cool part of kind of what we do is like she poured her heart and soul into everything that she did and we've got pieces of her everywhere sprinkled throughout and i think that's um super super cool it, it is. It's sad and it's cool at the same time because, you know, it was, it was great to see all these videos where you were obviously close uh, at, by the end of this, 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 this project, uh, especially uh, Jeanette and Maggie Robertson and you. You, you, you three are, when you get together. You're like a bunch of girls at a, at a slumber party. You just, you just had a lot of fun. I got a clip here of all you together. I think this is at a signing, but I'll let you talk about that after I show the clip. It's a joy to see that. You guys that's, have a lot of energy. That's us. We're just, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> um, look, two things. One, that's also just who we are. Two, you know, when you're spending eight hours a day with silver sharpies in a room with two, like three actors, it's just bound at some point to turn into some sort of chaos. And I feel like we've met that expectation every time that we've done a signing. Thank goodness. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's, that is awesome to see. You know, it's also fun that you guys get together. You get together to hang out with yourselves, but you also do this to like, this is what I love about today, man, especially during the time of a, uh, COVID, you know, just, it really did make everybody, and we were already going down that path, but it really did make things more interactive, man. Uh, the fan, you know, especially with video games and whatnot, fans and, you know, they're, they're so used to seeing you guys at conventions and interacting with you there, but then the whole thing you totally. know, became yeah. popular with Zoom and it, all that kind of stuff, and uh, it was cool to see you be interactive with people like that. 
such a unique thing because I mean, COVID sent everyone home, and you would think that it would have led to a lot of like disconnection, and it did in so many ways because of our inability to see each other in person, which is still super important. But like the amount of new people that I met, the friends that I made, the people that I was talking to on a regular basis, the people that I'm still talking to on a regular basis from kind of having that time of reflection. And lots of people say that you kind of go home and figure out like, oh, wow, I have to sit with my thoughts and recognize who I am and where I want to belong and what I want to do. And um, I think that's really valuable, if not scary for some people. But uh, for me, getting to, like, I started streaming on Twitch because we're just home and there's no jobs and, like, let's play <laughs> games and hang out. And I I just met so many amazing people from all all over the world. And it's kind of like your own little tv show or virtual con or you know whatever you want to call it and then i got to bring on my friends so it's like hanging out playing games with your friends and doing it with a community of people uh who really value it and who like rely on it in many ways for for joy and a little bit of entertainment so yeah i think getting to connect with people digitally really was one of my highlights of of 2020 and as we come into 2021 and things open back up it's been um, really, I come into, we're halfway through 2021, guys. Wow. Um, but it's really been cool to, to mesh both worlds. It's been so nice to see people in person again. It's been so nice to reconnect with my friends and get to do these live signings with the girls um, in person, vaccinated and maskless. Oh, it's amazing. And um, simultaneously, like, integrating all of the friendships and things that I learned during during lockdown i it's it's it changes everything in some way i think we're gonna continue to be more connected in powerful ways and i'm excited for cons to come back i don't know about you Corey, if you're ever a con guy but like i can't wait to like shake people's hands actual hugs that sort of thing um but things like streamly which is the signing service that we've been doing really has provided such a cool way to just stay connected and, and interact with people and 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 honestly just like nerd out with them like be excited with them which is a pleasure yeah you know i have a look well, basically if you ask me a question Corey, i'm gonna take over and talk for two minutes all right that's it so nicole that is what the baby this is called an interview that's what we do <laughs> you know this is what, it's not about Corey, me talking like, it's about what's you what's your favorite color what, like where is your soul you know it what do you want to do where these, do you see yourself in five years man you don't don't ask me these questions because if I do people are going to start saying see look at him he won't let anybody talk he's taking over you know <laughs> so I'm not I, it's all about you I need to know about you, Corey. Welcome to Nicole Tompkins show hi today we have Corey Coleman on everyone Corey Coleman <laughs> Really cool, dude. Really cool. Looking great. Look, we're matching. Love that you planned that, Corey. Thank you so much. That's really considerate of you. Um, Corey. Yes. So tell us, tell us about your, tell us about your, your channel, your show. Double. I mean, you have talked to some people, man. Like, what got you started? You know, I, I've done so many things that I'm proud of, but I have to tell you, one of my best moments doing this, and I've done this for years. One of my best moments is when I was talking to. This this great talent, uh, Nicole Thompson. I don't I don't know if you ever heard of her before, but huh. amazing amazing actress, amazing Weird. amazing um, amazing voice. Uh, does a British accent like nobody's business. If you yeah. ever run across her, I'm going to tell you it's going to change your life. It really is. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll check her out. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. What I mean, what what in, what inspires you to meet people like her? What what inspires you to to ask questions and and chat with interesting, unique guests? Because you know that if if that's your life passion, there's got to be something something in you that also uh, reflects similarly, at least from a values perspective. Oh, and I got to tell you, now if you ever run across Nicole, she's a great person, talks too damn much, but she's awesome. She's awesome. Right. No, <laughs> Right. I'm kidding, Nicole. Nicole, this has been no, Nicole. You know I'm joking. This has been you are one of the most fun personalities that I've talked to. I get and, and now let me just you know I've been I've been stroking your ego through the whole thing and you deserve it. But really, it's it's awesome when you come in here and you see somebody with the kind of energy that you have because you know I I would rather rather much take this than somebody who sits there and acts like they don't want to be here. I don't want to talk. So this has been a complete pleasure to talk to you. So basically what I'm hearing is to Corey's fans, he basically didn't answer any of my questions. So on one of his late, late night shows, when his IQ goes down or whatever it is that he says, um, <laughs> you guys should get him going 
on on you know really some of the deep stuff. Ask him why why he's here. Why is he doing what he's doing? I will answer he, one deep question, very short, very succinctly. What 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 would you like to know so somebody can learn something deep about me? Because I do come across as very stupid. No, you're not at all. You couldn't you couldn't be to to be the kind of humorous questionnaire that you are. Um, yeah, no, I want to know. I want to know what what got you started. Why this? Why are you doing this? Uh, because I'm an attention whore, you know, and I figured uh-huh. if I want to do that, might as well make money by it one day. Be a Good. true hoe. And, and what's past that? Because I love the humor, and the humor's totally there, and the humor brings us smiles and joys. <laughs> and what's, what's past the humor? What's past being a, a, an attention whore? What about this makes you want to be here? You know, I always thought that I... I, I was I had a very outgoing personality. I don't know any kind of strangers when I when I meet them. I love to talk to people. I've embarrassed myself talking to strangers before, so I figured you know if uh, if I have that kind of thing where I can talk to people I've never met, then why not roll it into something like this? That is such a cool quality. I'm gonna be totally honest. The ability to like walk out into the world and have no one be a stranger. Like what a beautiful beautiful skill and part of who you are like that is so cool that you were able to channel that amazing you know personality trait into something that shares that with the world on a bigger Aww. platform like we are we are blessed to have you using something that you were born to do and doing it well and with humor and levity <laughs> and joy and bringing smiles to all and maybe drinking late at night and whatever else it is you do not during the day oh cool. nicole during you're too time. kind nicole you know what i wish you and i just as a test, I wish you and I were hanging out at one time because I bet you're like me. I bet you are the kind of person, are the kind of person where you just have people of all types, sometimes crazy, just come to you out of nowhere, just talk to you out of nowhere. You're sitting up there minding your own business. You swear that when you go out, I'm not going to talk to anybody. And then all of a sudden, somebody in the weirdest way just starts talking to you. You know it. You know it. I, um, I I actually got it from my mom, who's the same thing. We our joke has always been from a very you know my very young very young young age. She says, "I have hi. Please tell me your life story written on my forehead. Um, doesn't matter where she is or where I am. If we go out, like we are gonna get we are gonna we are gonna learn something about someone. And you know what?" regardless of whether or not that some times can be tiring, I wouldn't have it any other way because it's such a cool way to go through the world and um, experience it, man. We got one life. We're here yeah. doing it. It's really, really cool to to try and live every moment to its fullest. And I think doing that through people is definitely one of my favorite ways. Oh, yeah. My wife always, when, we, when we're coming from home, uh, like from a restaurant or something, she's always scolding me like my mom. Stop talking to people. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> so. Do not get to know that server. I'm like, well, but here's the thing. He started film photography. He just moved from Seattle, and he's thinking about heading. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, so I, I can tell that about you. Uh, I, I, before you go, I want to play a quick game. It's not anything intricate. It's not anything gimmicky. Anything. It's just something I want to. Uh, something I want to. I want you to guess at. And you probably okay. know. Maybe you don't. Uh, oh, yeah. I've even gotten trouble bringing things up like this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, what is this clip from right here? Do you recognize this clip? Call out the doctor, call out the nurse. This pain is working. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you recognize that? How did you even find that? That's unbelievable. People, that's a yeah. clip that from Tommy in the Cool Mule. Oh, Heck yeah, it is. Starring Ice T as the voice of the mule <laughs> yes yes it is hi welcome to texas it, people in texas make movies um and i was literally i mean am i in that clip i remember filming it i was like 10. yeah i, was, I think that you are so the reason why i get in trouble asking this is because myself i mainly my my my, my assistant uh producer guy he, he goes through and he finds just all this so stuff. So he's the one to blame. I see. Yeah, what's I'm not happening. gonna have you blame me. I'm gonna shift to somebody else in case you get mad. Yeah, Corey's like, it's not me. I didn't do it. I wasn't going to bring up clips from your test. No, no, I'm so. Oh, I'm so sorry. I told that guy not to do that kind of stuff. But oh, he did it yeah. Anyway. You know, I'll talk to him. Yeah. I'll talk to him. No, he found this because what we do is we go through IMDb, and oh, we yeah. just and we just and we don't look for like 
obscure or embarrassing things. We just find something that sounds interesting, something that might be, you know, way down the line yeah, that nobody of brings up. Not. Tommy and the Cool Mule just sounded interesting to you. I it get it. It did. And, um, the, and we saw that you were barn dancer. And so we looked this up right here. So I was like, I was going to say, do you know which one you are? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't think, I don't, like, I don't even know if I made it into the movie. I, I've never even, like, I've never even tried to find myself because that's called extra work. See, that's, <laughs> I'm in there. But I kid you not, I was literally like 10. So I'm probably like on the side drinking lemonade somewhere. Like, I'm sure I probably did a little dancing, but I would have been like the cute little kid that's kind of like being, you know what I mean? Like, I was a baby. It, it, now, what I'm just, I'm gonna take a, I'm just gonna take a little, uh, little guess. Would you okay. would you say would you say, Nicole, that this this possibly is you, right here? Maybe. I don't know. I thought I you, saw red hair. What are you? Which one? Re- oh, there's there's a girl. Oh my God, that is me. <gasps> That's me. Is yes. that you? With the bangs. With the bangs. Straight across bangs. I had straight across bangs until I was like twelve. Right here. No, 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 Pat. No, no, no. Go back, go back, go back. Go, go back, go back, go back, go back. Right there. White shirt. White shirt. That's me. See the Wh- white shirt? White shirt right here. Oh, that is, that, that is you. I think that's me. I think Let's, that's me. We're going to say that's you. I don't recognize that shirt, though. So maybe, maybe that's me. We're going to say if that's you. Play it really, really slow. Okay. We're going to do some NCI type thing here. All you right. got this. I, I think so. I don't know. I think I was younger than that, though. Maybe I wasn't. Okay. Yeah, you can't even see me now. See, I'm behind them now. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. I was really, really young. Maybe I was closer to eleven or something. But yeah, I think that was me. I tell you what, if that Blonde is face. you, you are Straight getting across. you are getting down, girl. Look at this. You are gone. Look at oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my, look at me go. Yeah. I, you're so right. Oh my god, I can't believe you found me. That was me. Oh yeah. We were we were we were go. I mean, it was like a it was like a <laughs> Texas. Throwdown, you know, you gotta, you got to bring out the big guns for that. Well, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. You never know what you're gonna get with that. I with Maggie, uh, we we found a clip of her from college uh, on stage, and the and the publicist says you take that shit out right now. Don't you show that? <laughs> so, yeah. so you never know how that's gonna come across. But I, I think Tom and the Cool Mule is innocent oh, enough. I mean, please. Guys, like highlight, highlight of my career, like right there. That's me. <laughs> Why would I be anything but proud of that moment? What, do you see how free that girl is? She is free. You know, cl- and that she last clip, oh yeah. Best life at probably 11 p.m., way past her bedtime in a humid 80 degree <laughs> night, being like, I'm in the movie. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah she's doing she's having a great time the crafties off to the side like ooh, she's doing good she's doing good i'm happy for her honestly i am too oh, i am too that's like when you say freedom that's that that either looks like freedom or heat stroke about to happen so <laughs> a little bit of both a little bit yeah. of both you know it's always all all mixed up in there i did a i did a project last year uh and it was 116 degrees outside when we shot um, and it came out, and I was like, oh, my God, girl doesn't even look like she broke a sweat. <laughs> um, meanwhile, was absolutely, like, it's never glamorous, y'all. It's never, it's never glamorous, Texas and me coming out. Um, but, yeah, it was super, super hot. So I've had some extreme shooting weather conditions, and I feel like that one was probably not high on the list of extreme. Um, so she was having a good night. Yeah, she was. Probably got into the punch that night. That's awesome. You know what, <laughs> Nicole? Thank yeah, you. Corey, the eleven-year-old got into the punch. You're right, the normal fruit punch. The, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> at the Texas hoedown right there. There's never normal fruit yeah. punch there. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's 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 been a pleasure to talk to you, Nicole. This has been great. So so much fun. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for joining me on my show, uh, Corey. You guys, I'm here almost every night except when I have cool guests, and then I come out during the daytime because uh, I'm a vampire. So if you guys want to come uh, check us out, you know, come hang out. We're here most evenings, and sometimes there's people around, and we do that during the afternoon. And I will I will see you guys um, then. Thank you so much for joining us, Corey Coleman, everyone. Corey Coleman. Thank Thank you for having me, Nicole. Thank you. You're so welcome. It's our pleasure. Truly, I really appreciate you coming on. I know it's your pleasure. I'm a very busy man, 
and I don't grace people with my presence very much like this. But I'm, I'm, I'm honored, like truly, big fan. I saw something in you, Nicole. You know, you're gonna go far one day. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be somebody. Corey, that means a lot coming from you. I'm gonna probably clip that and send it to my mom. So. <laughs> This has been great, everybody. I've had so much fun and a lot of laughs today. She has cracked me up. If anybody ever has the privilege to interview Nicole here, you're in for a treat, man. You are, you are completely awesome. This is the highlight of my day today. Thank you. Oh, Corey, I'm so glad. I really appreciate that. And hey, same. This has been a true delight. Yeah, and uh, hopefully, you know, with other things that are coming up, uh, which they will because as a Told you people, uh, Nicole is very multi-talented, so there's going to be things coming up. But I hope that I'll I... I'll see you when I see you. I hope I'm not too... You don't get too big to talk to a little old person like me at some point. <laughs> Never. I'm definitely going to have to have you back on, Corey. Oh, I would appreciate that. All right, yeah. Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. She is so incredible, y'all. She is, she is so nice. That Seriously, that is somebody that is uh, wonderful to talk to. Somebody who has that kind of energy, and you can just know that they're, they really are a very, very nice person, despite their talent and everything else that's going on with them. I know she is. And uh, I couldn't feel, again, more honored to have somebody on like that talking to me today. And I'm also honored to always be talking to you out there. You know that. And that means you can talk to me anytime that you like. So... Whether I'm streaming or interviewing somebody or if I'm, I don't know, I'm in the bathroom, I'm taking a, you know, uh, sleep or whatever. Uh, go ahead and give me an email, kcoolmans at gmail.com. That's K-C-O-O-L-M-A-N-Z at gmail.com. You email us with any kind of questions, comments, compliments, insults, input, and or advice. Hit us up on the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Copy all the information down right there. Memorize it. Love it. But you got to use it. And if you find yourself taking a trip to Austin, Texas, or, I don't know, moving here, then please let us know what your plans are. Kcoolmans at gmail.com. Let us know if you're moving here and just passing through because we want to hang out with you. All right, everybody. It's been great. Can't wait for the next one, whether that's an interview or anything else, as long as it's with you. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.